base model for 60 bucks surfaces are f picky <laughs> they say just switch to linux just switch to linux they say so i am uh, sort of stranded though not really um the next train to grand central is going to be like in an hour might as well get started on this video I just bought a base model Surface Go, like base, base model for 60 bucks on Goodwill on eBay with the intention of slapping Linux in it. Like there's an entire GitHub page about it. It's called Linux Surface, running Linux on Surface devices. I like the hardware of the little Surface Go. It is. I like the size. I like the weight. I like how it looks. I don't like this thing is bogged down by Windows. You know what's interesting? I didn't realize it until later. It cost as much as the brand new type cover. So the one that came with is the Ice Blue Alcantara. Boo! Tank pods. So why did I end up buying a Surface Go in the first place? I got a 12-inch MacBook, I got a smartphone, I never thought I'll be needing a tablet, and guess what? I don't need it. See, I basically went to eBay, searched for cheapest Surface Go, and then this guy popped up. And really, the only catch is it didn't come with the, the Surface Magnetic Charger thing. I don't care. It charges over Type-C. That's all that matters. So after I installed Windows 10, ran all Windows updates, and importantly, firmware updates, so for the specific model of Surface Go with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, there's a firmware that you want to avoid. The good news is I'm getting the 1.038. The one I'm being warned about is 1.034. So I guess I'm safe. Hmm, doesn't really tell what firmware it's on right now. Clearly the first MO is to slap Linux on this thing. No, that's not me. So I installed Windows 10, ran all Windows updates and all the firmware updates. And as soon as that was done, I went through the hassle of trying to figure out what this thing would support to boot. Okay, this shit is way harder than I thought. And I looked at all the guides. So surfaces are f picky on what they want to boot from. So it has to be, it will only boot if it's GPT, it will only boot if it's 64-bit, it will only boot FAT32 for flash drives. So I'm um, editing me here. It wasn't FAT32, it was NTFS. Uh, just for it to boot to USB. I have tried my jCreate dongle, this dongle, this dongle, and even this basic short USB 2.1 from a Google Pixel. It's not working. It's straight up. I have multiple like Linux bootables. None of them work. It would refuse to boot. Secure boot off. First boot, USB. I also tried holding down the volume down button to force it to boot to... Nope. Re really doesn't want to have Linux on it. Until I tried Ventoy because this thing apparently would only support NTFS GPT boot. At least with Ventoy, it's like super convenient. I guess I just started throwing actual Linux ISOs on it. Here it is, secure boot off. <sighs> Finally, we got that oh, glorious flashing over there. We got the Ubuntu right there. Yay! I went through several distros. Now, to context of the video, I installed Ubuntu, I installed Pop! OS, I installed Fedora, and then I come full circle, and I'm back on Ubuntu. Because guess what? It, Ubuntu's the one that's the best, but it's still... Uh... You know what? I'm gonna go and sell my soul for them. Now I wanna see if everything's working. We detach the keyboard. Touchscreen is working. And then... Ooh! Rotate just works. I'm only using 1.4 gigabytes of RAM. On one hand, there's no fancy transition when you rotate it. On the other hand, 
It just happens. It can just. <laughs> this is a fresh browser. Then you get fresh OS install and and get, get that. Um. Yep. Welcome to America. What has happened to your home page? What is going on? Uh, what else is here? Oh, that's bothering me. Can I like... How do I move this? My neck hurts. My eye hurt. My sanity hurts. So one of the annoying problems that I immediately noticed is that the touchpad was scrolling way too fast. So you look up of course, Ubuntu, how to adjust touchpad scroll speed. <laughs> oh, wait, there's more. Oh, wait, there's more. Oh. To adjust the touchpad scroll speed, not the, not the mouse speed, not the mouse speed touch. Do the two finger scroll speed. You have to install that, then you have to run that, but you don't do the measurements with this. You just need it so it shows you the kernel specified touchpad size. And then you do some math. <laughs> so I've experimented with, so that's a kernel touchpad size for my surf for the surface go. So that's a 0.5, so I took to adjust it down to like half speed. I had to divide those numbers into two and then round them off. Welcome to Linux, folks. Welcome to f***ing Linux. Why are people not on Linux? Because you have to deal with this sh** instead of, you know, a GUI of something like on Windows or on Mac. Ugh. I gave five bucks to Ubuntu Handbook, and if you guys find this useful, like, he has a coffee link um, somewhere. Um, it's still a little too fast. Like, it's still a little too fast, but at least there's no delay with, like, crawl. I think there's still a delay, but it's super tiny. It's like a millimeter. Like, it's still a far cry from a freaking MacBook, which is just godly. This is godly right here. This is, like, um, um, a little better than my Duet 3. There's no delay. 12 p- 12, 15 p.m. I still need to shower. So, this is just a few minutes later. What do you have now? Oh, now it works. Why don't people switch to Linux? Just switch to Linux, Pete, they say. Just switch to Linux. Just switch to Linux, they say. I'm probably doing something wrong. Your Linux chads are definitely screaming on their screens right now. Keep screaming until you lose your voice. This is in less than 24 hours. There we go. So the vent toy works normal. What? Also, why is the on-screen keyboard coming up when I have the physical keyboard attached? The scrolling right now not only is too fast, it's like stepping. It's not smooth. <sighs> it's running on X11 instead of Wayland. Okay, so now I have to do this at Wayland enabled true. That's not good. Now, switch that. What I was looking for. It's working. Scroll is smooth. Too too fast. You win some, you lose some. This thing uses more RAM. I think it's just GNOME. GNOME is just RAM hungry. 
but it is snappier. That's, it is nice and snappy, but who knows, once I do my usual run, see what happens. So I've been using Fedora for the past 24 hours, which is really not a long time, but I have been enjoying it a lot. It is nice and snappy. He has a much more intelligent memory management uh, with ZRAM and all that stuff. All the important apps are there except for one. Again, it's like so close. It's like one more missing thing, but we'll get to that later. Just like Ubuntu, basically everything works already. Like it, were, it was already on Wayland. It's already on GNOME. This one's actually on newer version of GNOME, which is much more touchfully and a lot, a lot prettier. I just had like two extensions right now. Now I said there was one problem. There was like one turnoff I have with this one. It's not Chrome by the way. I don't need Chrome. I need Parsec. Parsec is only officially supported on Ubuntu and they're very specific about it. And some of you Linux chads over there will be like, oh, just use um, this remote access software or that remote access software. I don't f***ing care. I have standardized on using Parsec. Parsec is super nice, low and latency. I got, I like Parsec. I want to use Parsec. I already done it through the software store. I already tried going by um, Alien to convert the .deb file into an RPM. It didn't work. I don't know the error. I looked it up. Trust me, there was so much Googling. But here's what's even worse. I am willing to s fall back to like the Parsec web app. That, because the web app is what I actually use when I was using Chrome OS. Some reason it doesn't. It doesn't matter if it's Chrome or Chromium or ungoogled Chromium. Dude, it, it's not working. And unfortunately, that is a quite a bit of a deal breaker. I think I'm gonna settle in this for now. I wanna take some time with Fedora because like so far so good. They, they're doing an excellent job. I am now several days with Linux on Fedora and so far so good. Um, I'll be doing an update because apparently with Fedora you want to do updates more often. So far so good. As you can see, it's installing Linux surface kernels. All right, welcome to our bathroom, um, for good reason. Uh, the room is actually quite steamy. Actually, it was steamier earlier, now it's not so much. That's so that I can put on this plastic matte screen protector, dust free or as dust free as I can. It's not the prettiest matte screen protector though. Maybe not the best texture. I wish it was just plain matte finish. Ooh, hear that? Well, I'm gonna live with it, I guess. Full circle, I tell you. Full circle. We're, we're, we're gonna be back on Ubuntu. If it still decides to shit the bed, I'm installing Windows 11. So at this point, all the choices are bad choices. If we run Ubuntu, um, you don't get the latest DE until like later this month and somehow keyboard doesn't always reliably show up. If you run a Pop! OS, that's just plain heavier. If you run Fedora, it's a bit more glitchy and is more RAM hungry. Running Windows 11 is a lot more CPU demanding, but hey, everything works. At least with this, at least with Ubuntu, the RAM uses like 1 gig, 1.5 gig idle. I remember when I was saying that Ubuntu used less RAM. But I remember it using like just one gig, 1.5 gig. Dude, I am so close to getting, just getting Windows. Can I get Parsec, please? Give me Parsec. Okay. Yeah, I am staying on Ubuntu 22.04. There we go, Parsec. Straight from Flatpak. I didn't have to do any fancy configurations or anything like that. It just worked. So, apologies for the poor lighting, probably poor audio, which is quite surprising that I'm putting this little effort in the video of myself and putting so much effort trying to get Linux, Ubuntu, Fedora, Pop! OS, Kernel, all these things to work. And in the end, 
not as beneficial as I thought. Gnome is more RAM hungry than I thought, which at this point you could now compare it to like Windows 11 with the Chris Titus tech um, command line thingy majig to trim down windows. There are some things that are broken. Cameras are not working at all, which means I get no windows hello or in Linux, so it'll be howdy. It was working in Fedora, but that's because Fedora is more, more cutting edge. While I'm on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, maybe the cameras would work in Ubuntu 24, maybe? So I think I am gonna try to stick around with Ubuntu on this thing. Honestly, it's a great conversation starter. Hey, I got a Microsoft Surface base model, first gen potato spec. I slapped Ubuntu on it. This thing with Linux is, it's not bad, it gets the job done. But it's annoying that little things don't work. But it is faster because there's less crap running in the background. Normally I try to make my videos more upbeat, more positive, but in this case it's just meh. I can install a lighter weight Linux distro, but it won't be touch friendly because if you want touch friendly Linux, you have to be on GNOME, on Wayland. Ubuntu 24 is coming soon, sometime around next week, maybe in two weeks. And I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade it when it arrives. I hope it's gonna be good.